Hey you guys, it's Bird tonight. We're here to talk about Colleen Ballinger and this video that she uploaded. I'm seeing, I'm seeing Taylor Swift in Paris pick my outfit and it's getting quite a bit of negative engagement as expected with her, but we know that she has made Taylor Swift her whole personality in between Taylor Swift and rocks. I don't know what takes first place, but for today in this video, we're going to be going over the Taylor Swift half of her personality. So we're going to react to the video together. If you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so as per usual, no negative comments on this video, at least from the first handful that I can see here. And there's 263 comments, 3.3 thousand likes to 6.9 thousand dislikes, and we're just gonna get right into it. So let's start at the top. Everyone, so I'm going to Paris in a couple of days because I've lost my mind. I literally cannot believe it is happening. I am, I feel like I'm dreaming. So Taylor Swift is going to be in Paris this weekend. I'm a huge Swifty. I love Taylor Swift and I did not get to go to her concert when she was in America. And I know she has more American dates coming up later this year. So I thought maybe I would end up- Has she always been such a diehard Taylor Swift fan? That's my question. Like pre, you know, three, call it like two, three years ago, was she such a Taylor Swift fan? Because I feel like now it's really part of her personality, like I mentioned. But before the, I don't know, like, it, it just seems like it's this new thing that she can now kind of like latch onto and obviously use Taylor Swift in her video uh, titles because she does it all the time. But tell me down below, was she always so... I'm a Swifty like through and through because I don't remember that, but correct me if I'm wrong down below. Going to one of those, but tickets are like $3,000, $4,000 to those shows. So I was kind of hoping that the prices would drop and maybe I'd be able to go to one of those shows or go to the shows in Vancouver because that's only a few hours flight from me. Never in a million years did I think I would go to Paris to see Taylor Swift. However, one of my best friends texted me a couple days ago and she said, hey, the tickets to Taylor Swift in Paris are really cheap right now, look. And they were like $200 compared to the thousands of dollars they've been everywhere else that I've looked. And Taylor Swift just came out with a new album, The Tortured Post Department, which I really love and she really loves. We're really excited to see how she's gonna incorporate that into the Eras Tour. So I was just excited this weekend watch the live streams of her performances in Paris but my friend who's also a mother of three was like hey it's Mother's Day this weekend should we go to Paris and I was like that's absolutely crazy uh yes we should we were kind of joking about it but then I looked at flights and I looked at hotels and I was like hmm it's kind of doable I'm not sure but because I used to travel so much for work I had a bunch of miles saved up I had a bunch of hotel credits saved up so I ended up using some of my miles and some of my hotel credits for us to go to Paris this weekend let's also not forget that her going to Paris she's going to make content while she's there so this is a business expense for her so let's not allow this oh I had points and I had credits and poor little old me is just trying to scrape pennies together to go see my idol that's not what's happening this is absolutely classified as a business expense for her the uh, flight the hotel and any money that she spends on the trip is going to be expensed have no doubt about that for Mother's Day. So our Mother's Day gift to ourselves is flying to Paris, seeing Taylor Swift, and then we're in Paris for a singular day, and then we fly back home. Is it crazy to fly around the world to see Taylor Swift? Um, yeah, it's absolutely insane. But guess what? I'm absolutely insane, and so I guess we're doing that. Eric was like, you definitely should go. You deserve this. Like, it's a perfect thing for you to do on Mother's Day. Please go have a blast. Like, he's like very supportive and excited about it. I'm already feeling so much mom. Eric's probably like, can you get the hell out of the house? Can you get out of here for a couple days? I mean, I'm can only imagine what it would be like to live with Colleen Ballinger. We've already heard the tales that Joshua David Evans shared and Jesus take the wheel. Guilt about it and I already feel like I don't deserve the opportunity to go see Taylor Swift in Paris. Like I literally cannot believe it's happening, but it's happening. So I am freaking out excited and I'm gonna need you guys' help to pick out an outfit and to tell me what to do. I don't know any French. Like I feel so stupid going to other places where I don't speak the language because I don't want to be that dumb American who shows up and is like, hi, why don't you speak English? Like I want to learn French, but I have like two days to learn French. So obviously I can't, so I just need to learn the basics of like key phrases that I need to know in order to survive there. I've been to Paris twice before. Both were really quick trips. One time I went, it wasn't a great experience. And the other time that I went, I was with my good friend Frankie and I ended up having one of the most magical nights of my entire life in Paris. Like one of my core best memories of my life was in Paris. One time I went, it wasn't a great experience. It's because she was with her ex-husband, Joshua David Evans. So way to just 
take another dig at him let's throw him in the trash once again like what are you doing like can you can you not move past the fact that you were actually the bad one in that marriage you were the one that was very obviously um not not a participating party in your own marriage and you still want to throw shade get over it get over it it has been so long she's just mad that swoop gave josh the uh, platform and opportunity to finally come out tell his story and he receives so much support for it and i'm always here for that uh, Josh has also recently shared that he is um, working with, he worked with this company, he did like a, a commercial, I'll throw it in as a little, um, uh, a little cut, but I'm so glad to just see him like thriving and clearly like he didn't throw shade at Colleen the entire time until it was time to tell his story and he stuck to the facts and was given Swoop's platform to do that and receive so much praise. And here she is, just salty. I went to Paris and uh, it wasn't a good time. Okay, girl. I decided to take a walk by myself in the rain at night in Paris, which is not a very smart idea, but I was literally wandering around Paris in the rain and it was beautiful. And I did not know where I was, but I was walking along like the little river and I saw sparkle lights like reflecting in the water. And then when I looked up, I was in front of the Eiffel Tower and it was like the most magical experience I've ever had in my life. I did not know I was near the Eiffel Tower and it was wonderful. And now I'm going with one of my best friends in the whole world to see Taylor Swift and just to explore Paris for a day. And I am so freaking excited. So wait, you're telling me that you were just walking along and the Eiffel Tower, which is huge, had all of these lights on it sparkling, and you had to look at the water to realize that it was sparkling, and then you looked up and saw the Eiffel Tower? Talk about not having any situational awareness. Hello! Excited, and I'm gonna bring you guys with me, but we'll talk more about that later. Right now, I need to switch out some rocks because... Of course she's gonna bring you guys with her, because then it's a business expense. Do not allow her to fool you as if this is some kind of favor that she's doing. Poor little old me. Let's go to Paris so that I can see my idol. This is 100% a transaction for her. She is going to upload the content so that she can write this trip off. Period. All I do with my life now, and I also need to put on some makeup because she's looking crusty today. I feel like no one could possibly still be interested in watching me dump out rocks into a bowl, but here we are. I am going through three different stage one tumblers today, so I just have to organize through and decide which ones are ready for stage two and which ones are I need more time in stage one. So I'm just going to show you dumping them out because sometimes people like that, I guess. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just going to show dumping them out into the bucket. I'm not going to show like going through them and everything, but yeah, all I can think about is Taylor Swift. I can't believe I'm going to Paris. It's like literally the only thing I can think about. What? I literally cannot believe I'm going, what is my life? What are you talking about? Oh my God. Everyone, it's the next day. And I just have to say that after I let the information settle in my brain that I'm actually gonna go see Taylor Swift, I got so excited because I remembered that I can finally do friendship bracelets. Last year, I was obsessed with making friendship bracelets, even though I knew I wasn't gonna go see her concerts. It was just like a way for me to feel included with other Swifties, even though I wasn't gonna see any of them. I just thought it was so fun. Like, what a fun thing to do. Eventually, the Eras Tour movie came out, and I went and saw that, and I was able to trade bracelets at the Eras Tour movies. Mostly, I just like gave my bracelets to people. I was really proud and excited about my bracelets, so I just like was excited to give them to people. But I did have a few left over that I put on my Taylor Swift Christmas tree last year. Flynn walked in the room, I was talking about this, and he's like, I wanna make a bracelet. So he's making one right now. I'm making one called Lavender Haze. I'm so excited to trade friendship bracelets, you guys. You have no idea. It's gonna be so fun. What kind of bracelet are you making right now, Flynn? Making a rainbow bracelet. A rainbow bracelet? One of my favorite just bracelets that was made last year was one that Flynn made. And we live streamed the Eras tour the night that she announced um, Taylor's version of 1989. And I had a couple friends over and Flynn thought it was so fun. And he was like, oh my gosh, this is the best holiday ever because it reminded him of like a Christmas or a birthday party. So he made a couple bracelets that said, Taylor Swift is my favorite holiday. And I just think this is fabulous. It's big, so you have to double it. But I love this. There's two of these. Flynn, you made these. So I'm probably gonna bring those, but I will never trade those. Those are like my favorites. I'm gonna have to give you guys a bead tour because I have so many beads, it's like kind of embarrassing. I love making these friendship bracelets. It's so fun. I can't believe I finally have a reason to actually make them because last year I was making them for actually no reason. We made them for that live stream that we watched, the 1989 live stream. Like, that's why I got all the beads in the first place. And I was just making them for myself because I wasn't trading them with anyone. And then I traded a few at the Eras Tour movie, and then that's it. So now I'm like so excited I get to actually trade bracelets. I need to learn how to say bracelet in French. What if I made French yes. versions of it? It's really not that quirky. I mean, who is watching this woman and actually being entertained by this content? Like, I'll be really honest, I'm not really that tired today, but watching this really puts me in the mood for a nap. 
and hey maybe some people watch my videos and want to take a nap and that's all good but this is just so it, it lacks substance it lacks creativity it lacks anything for like there's no consumption value to watching Colleen Ballinger Here's the bracelets I have left from last year. Folklore, Calm Down, Invisible String, and this one goes in the dark. I have an idea. Why don't you make a bracelet that says, I'm sorry, Adam McIntyre. I'm sorry, Joshua David Evans. I'm sorry, Becky. I'm sorry, Oliver. And maybe then it might be a little drop in the bucket to say, you know what? Maybe I'll watch the rest of this video, but right now I really want to just like bury my head in the sand and take a nap. Any of the ones that are like this gray color go in the dark. As the traffic lights, if it'll be all right, they said, I don't know. I thought these little traffic lights. Key lime green, my tears ricochet, seemingly ranch. And this one says shade never made anybody less gay, but it's kind of hard to see unless you're wearing it. So those are what I made last year that I have left. Those are the only ones I didn't trade. And then these are the ones I made last night. So we have reputation, midnight, lover. And this one has this cute little charm on it. Uh, this is tortured post department. Karma is a cat with all these cute little cat charm beads. Love of my life, but I also put loss of my life because that's how she ends the song. Tortured post department, a couple of lavender haze ones. Reputation with a little snake another lover another tortured post department and then i made a bunch of these when i went to the era's movie and i forgot to show you with the last batch but this was the era's movie one so anyway i have a bunch of ideas for different ones i'm gonna make hopefully later tonight but that's what I have i'm gonna part. scrub the part where she's showing her kids um and the part earlier where her oldest kid is in it of course i'll add a blur of the face but they're just like in the garden now so let's get on to this try on try on disaster if you're wondering what I'm going to wear, I do not know, but I did buy a bunch of dresses that I'm going to just try on and hope one works and then return the rest. But I also have dresses that could work really well, so maybe I'll just wear one that I already have, but I also might wear one that I bought. We'll find out. Okay, the first one I'm trying on is... You know, somebody that is as financially successful as Colleen Ballinger, you would think like, okay, you're going to do this try on haul, which again is a business write-off because it's part of your content. Um, instead of returning things that you don't like, um, why don't you donate them to a local shelter? Why don't you donate them to a local organization that might be um, a, a safe haven for domestic abuse survivors? That would be a really admirable thing to do instead of returning it to get a refund to your credit card, which it was already a business expense. Um, just it's non-stop nonsense around the clock with this one this it's like a completely sheer black schmock thingy so that's why i'm wearing this little number midnight is my favorite album i'd like to go on a midnight theme but i don't know if that's gonna happen so here it is on i actually love the idea of this but it is not comfortable i don't know what i wear underneath it because it's a completely backless dress anyway it feels almost like it's too small like it feels weird in this area like it feels tight and bunchy right here and even though it's sheer it feels really warm and i feel like i'm gonna be sweating and jumping and dancing and i don't want to be uncomfortable you know but i do kind of like the vibe of this hmm, i don't know i don't know i like the vibe but it's not comfortable and I feel like I should go with comfort. All right, let me try the next one. Oh my god, I love this dress. It's like comfortable too. I have to find like little tiny shorts. Oh my god, wait, I actually love this one so much. Okay, next one, I love this one though. Oh no, this one's cute too. I don't know, this is so cute. Which one do I like better? I don't know, this one's more midnight. Obviously the other one's more lover. Dang, oh no, I don't know. You guys are gonna have to help me pick. Ugh, maybe I can do a costume change in the middle of the show. What do I do? They're both so cute. I'm gonna like midnight. rainbow midnights. I love it. I, 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 midnight's my fave. Oh my god, I did not perceive this being a problem. Though. Who is this in the video? Is that her nanny or is that her assistant? Y'all look at the video and tell me down below. I'm just very curious. Like, who who is that? This one's cute too. This is lavender haze vibes. It's very sparkly purple and it's really soft. I do think I like the other two better than this one, but this one's really cute too. I don't know. What do you guys think? I don't know what I'm gonna do now. Now I'm stressed. Oh my god, I love this one. This is like leather material. Have I figured out my outfit? No. Have I started packing it all? Absolutely not. But I did start to have some anxiety about being away from my children. So even though Eric is completely capable of dressing the kids every day, I just decided to lay out all their clothes so that it's just simple and easy. So I've laid out clothes for Maisie and Wesley and put like a bow for each outfit with Maisie. And there's obviously a lot of spare clothes because they get very dirty. That's what the days of when they wear which clothes. Imagine going on a really short trip and not trusting your literal husband enough to dress your children. This seems very excessive to me, and hey, maybe that's what works for them, but I think this is totally overkill. Like, 
So what if they're not in matching outfits for a couple days? As long as they're in clean clothes and they're happy, isn't that what matters? Like, this, this, kind of weird, but I don't know. Am I wrong? Tell me down below. So it's just simple and easy. And then here's Maisie's pajamas, Wesley's pajamas, Flynn's pajamas. And again, I put the days that they wear them. So it's all simple and ready to go. That was completely unnecessary, but it made me feel a little bit better about leaving. And I'm only gonna be gone a few days, but I just can't shake that mom guilt of like feeling so terrible while I'm leaving my kids for a few days. I'm gonna miss them so freaking much. Oh my gosh, I just started to walk downstairs and saw the dresses again. You guys, I don't know which one I like the best. I'm so eager to hear what you guys think. These are my three favorites. One of my friends likes this dress the best. Another friend likes this dress the best. And I think I like this one the best. I also really like this one. And I really like this one. I like them all. I don't know what to do. Anyway, I also got the kids little prizes for while I'm gone so every day I can FaceTime them and tell them a hint or a clue as to where their next prize is so that while I'm gone they have something exciting to look forward to, something to remind them of me and let them know. So you can't trust your husband to entertain your kids for a couple of days. So you can't trust him to dress them, entertain them. Are you going to plan all their meals too? Is that is that what is coming next? Like are you are you going to plan their entire day? Like why not just allow him to be an adult like I don't know this hand holding is a little bit of a red flag for me but I did think it was very very funny that on their recent podcast Eric and Colleen talking about her obsession with Taylor Swift was a very very interesting take I will try to find a clip and include it but she was salty at him for not I guess being on her level as far as being obsessed with Taylor Swift music, I, I don't know. I don't feel too strongly about this one way or the other. This, this isn't I feel like, like I already know what you're going to say. This isn't like my cause. You know what yeah. I mean? I don't really care I already know what you're that gonna say, much, sure. but I just like, I kind of initiated this, trying to have a mature conversation with you about this last week mm -hmm. and was, a, and then, and you know, I think it was okay, mm -hmm. but I wanted to try like talk about it more here, but like what I'm going to say needs to relax is, um, Taylor Swift lyrics. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Um, do you, <sighs> the, I, and I said, what's funny is you say that you tried to have a mature conversation about it last week, and I feel like it did because I said, okay, you don't have to like her. Yeah. The issue is that I don't care. Like, it's not I my place to say. Well, it's actually, it's, it's subject, but art is subjective, right? Of course. You're right. Just because I think her music and her lyrics is brilliant and incredible and has like saved my life in so many ways and changed my life in so many ways. And I've found an incredible community of awesome people that we can all connect over this and obsess over it together. Like, that doesn't mean that I think everyone should. And I don't try to convert anyone to not. do that. And I also know that that does not mean that every everyone's going to like it. And so there's a lot of people right. who don't like it. What I find interesting is that when people don't like it, that's who needs to relax. Like they, they go, banana, no, there's no Swifties who are like, everyone has to think Taylor Swift is the best person in the world. We're all just like, okay, you don't have to like it. Why are you listening to it? And why are you talking about oh, it so I'm not much? listening. I'm, I'm hearing it because of because I live in a house with you right. and you walk around, like you walk around playing it. Mm -hmm. Like you walk around with it playing on your phone, mm -hmm. not in headphones, just in speaker, yeah. speaker phone. You, this is kind of like what you've been doing. I can doing. put in headphones if that bothers you no, so No, it doesn't bother me. It's just, this is how I've absorbed it. And mm -hmm. I just think, and I'm not saying all, I'm not saying previous albums. I'm talking about this specific release of 30 songs. Mm -hmm. 31. I'm just saying it's 31. <laughs> 31. I would just, I don't know. I, I don't know. I was I just guessing. 31. I was, be, I was exaggerating, but uh, good to know. It's exactly 31 songs that are like that. Uh, you know, it's kind, it all, in my subjective opinion, mm -hmm. um, and I've been with you on this Taylor Swift journey over the past year and a half where you've really got into, I mean, I've been around you. You've been near me. I've been, yeah. near, I've been yeah. near you um, relatively, you know, a lot of it, you yeah. know, um, and, and I watched the the movie of the concert with you when you, we did that. And I was, it, you know what I mean? And that's obviously being in pop culture, like very weird. So then hearing this now, I was like, I was, it just seemed like, um, I think maybe I should drop it. Drop what? This conversation. I don't know. It's not my Maybe you want to. No, I mean, but, it's, it's, but it's, it seemed like, you know. I was like, is this a prank? Yeah, you don't have to like it. No one's telling you you have to like it. My my, my issue with it, um, so the night that the album came out, I was very excited. I love Taylor Swift and I do think she's like a poet. Like I, I love her lyrics. I think she's very talented. Right. And um, and so I was very excited to listen to it and I was getting ready to listen to it and you said, can I listen to it with you? Yeah. And I said, yes, but I just, you need to know this is like very important to me. You can't like poke fun or like, this is like an important thing where it's like, mm -hmm. I need to just be excited and this is a happy, fun thing. This yeah. is not a like, this sucks kind of a thing. Did I do that? I don't think I did that. No, but but no. So you listen to a few songs and then you were like, eh, it's not good. This isn't music is what you said. 
I, just said and, were, I think I said they weren't songs and I went to bed. Yeah, you said these aren't songs. This You said these aren't songs. This isn't music. I'm fine with someone going like, I don't like this. It's not my thing. Yeah. My issue is when people state like. Oh, I don't think it's for she, me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's fine. I think that's totally fair. I don't like when people go, this isn't good or this is not music or this is this. Su she sucks. I'm like, well, that's you can say I don't like this. But to say no, as it a blanket statement, yeah, I think I've, that's what I was like. Oh, no, I think I have like a more specific. It'd be interesting to hear her work with like different, like maybe a different. Um, producer you know something. she has worked with a lot of different producers sure. i mean it's yeah. what's interesting is I, i've heard a, a few people say stuff like that and like every album has been wildly different Ex aside from folklore and evermore are pretty similar um but other than that like all her albums are so wildly different styles yeah so that's so funny to me when people say that because i'm like yeah she's done think... so many albums and they're all yeah. so different except for folklore evermore and this one's i'd say kind of in the same wheelhouse as that but there's not really like i don't think it's my it's not for me it's right. not to my taste so i don't think it's my this i think this is bad i think this is like i don't think I, me and I, especially like <laughs> A guy should be on a podcast saying like why Taylor Swift's new album isn't good. I don't think yeah. that. I don't think that's a good uh, podcast. You're allowed content. to feel that way. I can either just listen to it in headphones on my own time, which I can totally do, and I'm happy to do, or you can um, try to find interest in something that means a lot to me and go like, why? What is it about it that you like? I don't understand. Okay. And then I could tell you. What? Um, <laughs> I was about to ask that question, but like, I don't know that I care <laughs> I'm, oh kidding, kidding, I'm kidding i'm kidding what, i mean the Which lions idea? the detroit lions just unveiled new uniforms last week what if you're like i don't like these new uniforms and i was like well it's very i like them and it's my team so i don't bad. think you would do that or I think if, like, just the, draft, like, okay. the draft is happening right now they drafted a player and you're like i don't think they should have drafted that two cornerbacks their first two picks you'd be like you don't know anything about this you don't understand oh, anything so about it it'd be the same conversation right and so and that's yeah and that's kind of what has happened here is you said that i go okay it doesn't offend me because i know you don't understand the lyrics and you don't understand the meaning behind it and why it's brilliant God that I'm thinking of them and that I miss them. So I need to go through all of the little gifts that I have for them and set all of that up. We've got little buckets. The Dollar Tree, man. The dollar store is where it's at. So we've got some beach buckets and bubbles, stickers, Play-Doh, little balls, little trucks and a little pony, crayons, chalk, ring pops. There is so much to do before I leave. These toys remind me of a Doherty Dozen haul, doesn't it? Just like the really cheap stuff that's going to break within a couple minutes or it's just going to end up in the trash, end up filling up our landfills. For somebody who has labeled herself before as so environmentally conscious and aware, you're like, all of this crap for what? So they can be entertained for five seconds while you're gallivanting across seas to uh, see Taylor Swift? So either way, I will include that clip of the podcast. It's episode number 136, and the YouTube video right now has 1,000 likes to 3.2 thousand dislikes, and that could be because of it's Colleen and she just gets a bunch of dislikes now, um, or it could be because people are siding with her and not liking that Eric is not obsessed with Taylor Swift. I'm not sure which one it is. I think it might be a little bit of both. But what a freaking... I just couldn't imagine, like... It would be a cold day in hell for me to come on my channel when we are in the middle of an economic crisis of people not being able to afford housing, afford food, afford... Um, anything outside of the bare bones necessity of what it takes to survive and to come on a YouTube channel and say, I'm literally flying across seas to go see this billionaire perform in Paris. I don't know how, like, how could you do that? And this is what I'm saying. People like Colleen block them. And this is why Blockout 2024 is alive and well, and I hope that it continues to grow. But for the meantime, I'm here to call all of these idiots out. And those of y'all that want to listen, go ahead. If you don't, that's okay too. But I'm here to have the conversation. So for today, if you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.